In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A very good morning to everybody, and welcome to any visitors who are with us this morning on this um, 17th Sunday of the Church's Year. It's also a special Sunday because uh, Pope Francis has dedicated this Sunday to the uh, to a, day of a special prayer for grandparents and the elderly. So that's uh, this is the second one. The first one, of course, was uh, last year. So uh, it's great. We'll have some, some extra prayers in the uh, bidding prayers for, for, for that intention. Um, uh, Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. We say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Chelsea's day of glory, glory, in Chelsea's day of glory to God. Stay, oh, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Chelsea's day, oh, Gloria, Gloria, in ex Chelsea's day, Stay, oh, Gloria, Gloria, in ex stay, oh. 
let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. I trust my Lord will not be angry, but give me leave to speak. The Lord said, How great an outcry there is against Sodom and Gomorrah. How grievous is their sin. I propose to go down and see whether or not they have done all that is alleged in the outcry against them that has come up to me. I am determined to know. The men left there and went to Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Approaching him, he said, Are you really going to destroy the just man with the sinner? Perhaps there are just 50 just men in the town. Will you really overwhelm them? Will you not spare the place for the 50 just men in it? Do not think of doing such a thing, to kill the just man with the sinner, treating just and sinner alike. Do not think of it. Will the judge of the whole world not administer justice? The Lord replied, If at Sodom I find 50 just men in the town, I will spare the whole place because of them. Abraham replied, I am bold indeed to speak like this to you, my Lord. I who am dust and ashes. But perhaps the 50 men, 50 just men, lack five. Will you destroy the whole city for five? No, he replied. I will not destroy if, it I fi if in it I find 45 just men there. Again, Abraham said to, me, to, said to him, perhaps there will only be 40 there. I will not do it, he replied, for the sake of the 40. Abraham said, I trust my Lord will not be angry, but give me leave to speak. Perhaps there will be only 30 there. I will not do it, he replied, if I find 30 there. He said, I am bold indeed to speak like this, but perhaps there will only be 20 there. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the 20. He said, I trust my Lord will not be angry if I speak once more. Perhaps there will be only 10. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the 10. The word of the Lord. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of affliction, you give me life and frustrate my foes. On the day I called, you answered me, O Lord. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. 
Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. On the day I called, you answered me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You have been buried with Christ when you were baptized, and by baptism too you have been raised up with him through your belief in the power of God who raised him from the dead. You were dead because you were sinners and had not been circumcised. He has brought you to life with him. He has forgiven all our sins. He has overridden the law and canceled every record of the debt that we had to pay. He has done away with it by nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. The word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, Say this when you pray. Father, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come. Give us, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive each one who is in debt to us and do not put us to the test. He also said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him in the middle of the night to say, my friend, lend me three loaves because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house and I have nothing to offer him. And the man answers from inside the house, Do not bother me. The door is bolted now, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give it to you. I tell you, if the man does not get up and give it him for friendship's sake, persistence will be enough to make him get up and give his friend all he wants. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. The one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his son a stone when he asks for bread? Or hand him a snake instead of a fish? Or hand him a scorpion if he asked for an egg? If you then who are evil know how to give your children what is good, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. I like this um, reading from the book of Genesis about uh, Abraham pleading with God to be merciful to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, um, knowing that their destruction is imminent. And so uh, we have Abraham pleading with God, bargaining with God, you know, surely you won't destroy them if there are uh, 50 just men uh, in the town. You won't, surely you won't destroy the just uh, with, the, uh, with the wicked. And... Uh, and so he, uh, 
uh, he gets the, he gets he whittles the number down to ten. So the Lord promises him that he will he will preserve the town that these towns if um, if he finds ten virtuous uh, men uh, just men living there. One lesson that we can learn then from this pas passage of scripture is the importance of our praying on behalf of other people. That uh, God promised to be merciful here if he could find a, a handful, ten, ten virtuous people, just people living in the town. So the, the importance of praying for other people, for others, and asking the Lord to be merciful to them. Uh, and this is a good example of God promising to be merciful uh, to, to, to others. And there are other examples of this in, in Scripture. So we should take heart from it to, to pray then uh, for others and pray that God will be merciful to them, that he will forgive them, that he will save them. And uh, let's begin by praying for our, our, uh, our loved ones, our family members, relatives, relatives and friends, those, particularly those who have wandered away from the church over the years, those who have fallen away, and we say, traditionally say lapsed, to pray for them that they'll come back to the church, to the sacraments, to reconciliation, and to the mass. Uh, and let's uh, pray, persist in that prayer for them and encourage them as well. Uh, in whatever we can say to encourage them and uh, maybe even a bit to challenge them in the right way also um, because our prayers will be heard. The, in, in some of the Mar Marian, I, mean, I think most of the Marian apparitions down the centuries, the apparitions of Our Lady uh, and other mystical uh, visitations, uh, the Lord and Our Lady have um, you know, emphasized the importance of praying on behalf of others. Uh, if we, in fact, you know, a very dramatic example of this, a very, distur you know, disturbing example is Fatima, where uh, she asked the children, Our Lady asked the children to pray for, for sinners, for their conversion, and even to do penance for them, which the children did, quite remarkable penances, these young shepherd children giving up their, their lunch, their lunches, and even uh, refraining from drinking water. We wouldn't recommend that these days, certainly in you know, a climate like, another summer climate like Portugal's, but, uh, or even ours. But, um, they, that's, that's what they did on behalf of others so that they would repent and convert and be saved. The, um, and uh, in fact, Our Lady showed them, the children, the shepherd children of Fatima, uh, Lucia, J Jacinta, and Francisco, a vision of hell. And, she, and after this terrifying vision, Imagine how that affected the children. After this terrifying vision, she said to them, you've seen hell where sinners go. To say, um, and then she said, many s sinners go to hell because there is no one to pray for them. So people end up there because there's no one to pray for them. So um, we, you know, that is a, obviously a very disturbing example of the importance of our prayer for others, for their eternal salvation. And if we think of the divine mercy pointing to the divine mercy image over here. That's one of the essential elements of the messages, the messages that our Lord gave to St. Faustina Kowalska uh, regarding div divine, the divine mercy devotion, that the importance of our prayers for others and the value of those prayers and the power of those prayers, uh, and particularly the divine mercy devotion that she, she gave to St. Faust, that our Lord gave to St. Faustina word for word. Uh, so uh, for their repentance, conversion, and, and their eternal salvation. In fact, he emphasized how powerful this prayer is for the dying, to pray at their bedsides um, for, their, for their salvation, even those who, who, um, who, uh, you know, who, who are not in a state of grace, who are, you know, resist, who are, in need, who are in grave need of God's mercy. So let's um, be inspired then to, to pray for others, pray for, for their well-being, uh, their, their re spiritual well-being, their repentance, conversion, and their eternal salvation, and to be assured that uh, our prayers are, are heard, and our prayers have merit and value before the Lord. Um, the, um, 
the Lord, in this, um, of course, it might be that the the grace that that person receives is the fi- is the grace of final penitence before they die, uh, through the through our persistent prayer for them, uh, and so that's uh, very important that we don't give up on anybody, uh, because there's always hope, uh, and uh, let's persevere in our prayers. In the uh, the gospel, then we have the the Our Father, the Lord giving. The, uh, the apostles teaching them the, the, the Lord's Prayer. And um, it's interesting, isn't it? They ask him to teach them to pray after they've seen him praying. So here, Jesus, we're told, once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John, John the Baptist, taught his disciples. So that we can also learn from that uh, the, the power of our witness of saying our prayers uh, you know, before other people, not to disguise the fact that we say prayers. If we have visitors and we say the Angelus at 12 o'clock or at 6 p.m., which, we're encouraged, which we should be saying anyway, um, is to invite them to join us. If they're not Catholic, they don't know the prayers, well, just say the prayers out loud or give them a copy of the Angelus uh, so that they can join in. Um, so that's an example of uh, praying with others, encouraging them to pray, setting a good example. Of course, mothers and parents and grandparents with their children and grandchildren to, to pray with them uh, and to seek every opportunity to pray, whether it's grace before meals, morning prayer, night prayer. And let's always pray, pray with them um, and uh, encourage them, set a good example. By, pr- by praying with them and letting them see us take prayer seriously. This um, then, the, this perfect prayer the Lord taught them, the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, uh, f- just say a few words about it. Father, may your name be held holy. Um, we want God's name to be honored in the world. We, and most of all, we honor it in our own lives by being uh, faithful to our prayers and to our, to our duties as, as Catholics. And also, we think about the importance of honouring the Lord's name by the uh, the way we speak. Let's avoid, of course, taking the Lord's name in vain in any shape or form. Some people may have got into the habit of saying, Oh God, or Oh my God, uh, to get out of the habit of that and encourage others as well. Sometimes we have to encourage, you know, mention that to people when they say, when they misuse the Lord's name, uh, mention how important it is not to misuse his name. Give us each day. Um, give us each day our daily bread. Uh, give us what we need each day. Certainly our food. We pray for our food and we give thanks to God for providing what we need uh, and to give us what we what we need each day. Not necessarily what we want, but what we need. What's, what's good for us. But also here, it, it, it's it, it's a, re- alludes. It refers to the Eucharist. Give us each day our daily bread the bread of the Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ, uh, spiritual food, soul food. We need that soul food, don't we, to, to keep us healthy, uh, spiritually healthy and strong in our faith uh, and able to resist uh, temptation, as, uh, as the Lord mentions a bit later on. Um, so uh, we, we need, that, need this, the Lord's food, the soul food, to strengthen us, to protect us, to keep us healthy and holy. Um, and also we, we, we remember how important it is to be correctly disposed to receive Holy Communion, um, that uh, it's for those who make, who make a commitment to the faith, practicing Catholics, it's also for those <coughs> who are in a state of grace as well, who are in God's grace. And it's also important that we remember if we receive the Lord regularly in Holy Communion at Mass, then we should be go- celebrating the Sacrament of Reconciliation regularly as well. The, um, and then the, and forgive us our sins. We, we have that humility. We need that humility to admit each day that we get things wrong, we make mistakes, that we commit sins. We, we pray every day the Lord will forgive us. Maybe even do an examination of conscience, which is a good, good habit to get into every evening, every night before we go to bed, and say the act of contrition then. We need the Lord's forgiveness and mercy every day. Uh, and then we... We have to forgive others. As, as we ourselves forgive each one in his debt to us, we need to be agents of God's mercy, forgiveness, uh, and to f- be read- and to forgive others uh, readily and not to withhold forgiveness from them because that is not what the Lord wants. It's contrary to his, his wishes for us. 
And in fact, in, in another version of the Our Father, is it in Matthew's Gospel, the Lord really makes a point of that, 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 one, that one petition in the prayer, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he says, well, if you want the Lord, in, in a paraphrasing, uh, well, just my own words saying what he, what, I, what he says, is if you want the Lord to forgive you, then you must be prepared to forgive others as well, uh, their, their offences. Uh, be merciful to others. And then, um, and do not put us to the test. Um, help us to protect us from temptation, from evil. Uh, and so we need, um, you know, whether we are in a spiritual environment, there are powers of darkness, the evil, the evil one and his minions who are uh, hell bent, <laughs> the correct term, hell bent on, on, on us um, falling uh, from grace. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, so we, we have to, Remember that, that we're in a spiritual battle and we need all the help we can get uh, and that uh, we struggle against the world, the flesh and, and the devil, the evil one. Uh, and that's uh, why we need to, to pray uh, every day and uh, to come to Mass uh, at weekends and even during the week if we're able to and to receive uh, the Lord's sacraments um, uh, worthily and to persist in that prayer for, 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 for others. Let us stand now to profess our faith together. We'll say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Lord God, in today's gospel, we hear Jesus say to us, Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. We come to you asking you to hear our prayers, searching for answers, and knocking at the door of your loving heart. The Holy Father's intention for the month of July. For the elderly. We pray for the elderly who represent the roots and memory of a people May their experience and wisdom help young people to look towards the future with hope and responsibility. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the church, its ministers, and the lay faithful will stand as living witnesses to the way truth, freedom, and justice all depend on one another to become a reality in our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that married couples will be open to God's gift of life, to build up their family, and so bless their parents with the noble title of grandparent. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the Lord God will give grandparents wisdom and patience as they assist their children and grandchildren in growing up in the Catholic faith and living lives of truth and integrity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the Ukrainian people. May they see justice and an end to war. May God defend each one of them from all evil. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for families who have begun or are about to begin their summer holidays. May they be safe as they travel 
and may their time together be filled with happiness and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the sick of our parish and all others that we know who are ill at this time. If we could remember especially today, uh, a lady uh, in our parish uh, in the Bourne area called Bernie Emery, who's very ill at this time. She's in um, Addenbrooke's uh, after a serious uh, operation uh, yes yesterday. May she and all that we have offered up receive very good medical care and in their suffering turn to Jesus and Mary. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we bring our own intercessions to God our Father who knows all our needs. We ask Mary, Queen of the Family, to be united with us in prayer as we say, Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou, thou amongst, amongst women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, be with us forever and always. Teach us to love you in everything that we think, say, and do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This family is being, this, sorry, this mass is being offered for the Bewley family deceased, the Bewley family deceased. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through goodness receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. That's it. Through this water, and why we come to share the divinity of Christ, humbled Himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for you. Wash me, O Lord, wash me, O Lord, from iniquity and cleanse from my sins.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed, therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Guthlac and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you out there passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gra graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Embrace you as already being there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the, the, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one or two notices. There is a, if you want to sit down briefly, there is a letter, uh, a message from Pope Francis, I've mentioned that previously, and there are copies of this, his message for the World Day of Prayer for, for, for grandparents and the elderly. There, is, there are a few copies uh, in the reception for that. It's a very good, it's a very good letter, very good article. Um, I think the, these are the main things now. We've got the ladies group coming up, haven't we? Uh, there's an event coming up soon, uh, which is, is it, is it like this Tuesday? Yeah, this Tuesday, one o'clock, there's going to be a meeting once again this week, so everyone's, in, all the ladies invo invited to that. And um, Philip uh, Preston's funeral will be here in uh, a week Tuesday, uh, uh, Philip, and uh, that sort will be at 10.30 Tuesday morning. There'll be a funeral, a funeral service, so that's a uh, uh, a, week, a week Tuesday. So I think that's it then now. Uh, please take a, uh, please take a, it, it away with you, copy the newsletter away with you. Lovely prayer there. Pope Emeritus Benedict's prayer for, 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 for grandparents. And we'll continue to pray for grandparents and their grandchildren, their families on Tuesday, which is the feast of Saint Joachim and Saint Anne, the parents of uh, Our Lady and the grandparents of Jesus. If you'd like to stand now for the blessing. There's no second collection today, is there? Not that I'm aware of, no. No, no second collection today. Um, that's it. Um, so anyway, we have reception. We, do we have re refreshments afterwards? Yes, got ref there are refreshments afterwards as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go and announce the Gospel. Thanks be to God. We're not having a final hymn yet. Yeah? Father be.